good morning again. I'm so delighted to share with you on this first Sunday of 2021 a, a message that the Lord has uh, put clearly on my heart for all of us. And as we, as we begin today, I want to remind all of us that things are not always as they appear. Things are not always as they appear. About a month ago, maybe six weeks, on a Sunday morning, <clears throat> I usually have a pen with me. But however, that morning I didn't have a pen and I needed to make a note. I forget what the note was, adding some thought or line to my message. And so no worries if I don't have a pen. Angela, our first impressions uh, minister, she always has a basket here to the uh, side of, of this stage. And out of this basket, she's got hand sanitizer and she's got this information sheet and uh, she's got tissue for me if I'm having a good time in worship. So I know there's a pen in there. So I reach down into this basket and I pull this pen out. And so as I'm getting this pen, I go back over there to my seat on the front row and I take this pen and I open it up and I try to write with it. Except it's not exactly what it appeared to be in that basket. This is what I had in my hand, this black pen. If you see that on screen there, I said, okay, I'm going to open this pen and use it. And then when I opened this pen, it was not something I was familiar with. It wasn't what it appeared to me to be. Turn that pen over, guys. Well, that is a voluminous superstar liquid eyeliner of L'Oreal Paris. Now, I guess somebody didn't like the way my eyes didn't pop out there online, and they slipped in and dropped this in the basket knowing I'd pick it up, wanting me to do a little work on my eyes. Well, I have never used one of these, and I don't think I'll start today, but it was not at it as it appears to be. You know, when we were coming into 2020, I'm talking about the fall of 19. Our staff was so together. Our staff was so excited. We were so ready for 2020. And it was going to be a breakout year for us. This last year, 2020, was supposed to be a year when nothing could stop us. Our, our unity was better than it had ever been. The sense of excitement, the powerful momentum in the church, and the early registrations that we had for all of our camps. I mean, the early bird sign-up for summer camps was through the roof, an all-time high. Kids camp sign-up. Everything was just going like a rocket ship and we were going to see 2020 burst through the ceilings and then coronavirus hit the clear blue 2020 vision fogged and blurred in a matter of a few short days our lives were forever changed immediately and changed for many of us permanently in many ways people that we love got sick people that we love lost their lives our staff team did an excellent job during 2020 of helping our entire church transition into a more digitally based ministry with zoom and facebook and youtube meetings and services so they did a great job the word we use was fluid which means we're trying to learn as we go as we were preparing for 2021 back in november our senior leadership team we're in a meeting in our conference room and we just began to have an extended time of prayer together as we do occasionally. And as we were praying, my mind and my heart were reflecting on how, how, and, uh, how the things had, had transpired in 2020 and praying about what they'd be in 2021. And, and then I thought, Lord, 2020 was a blur. And I said, Lord, I sure pray that 2021 is better, that it's different, that it's stronger and more powerful, and, and that we get out of this year and into a new year and something dynamic happens. And right in that moment of prayer, and we were the, the senior leadership team were around that table, and I was in my spot, and I may have even been on my knees. I can't rightly recall. But in that moment, I, I, I just felt and sensed in my mind and my heart, 2021. 2021 and I said Lord I know 2021 is coming and then clear as a bell in my mind it's not a verse that I had memorized or anything God spoke to my heart however God speaks to you he speaks to me not audibly but he just said John 2021 so what I did is I turned to the book of John and I looked up 2021 just like this it's not a, a verse that I had in memory 
And I read this verse, John 20, 21. Jesus therefore said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, I also send you. Peace be with you. And that was, of course, what God just began to impress on my heart. Peace be with you. There's no way that any of us can face this COVID-19 and have peace if we're just looking at the craziness of this world. We can't look at 2020 and have peace if we look at the elections and the riots and the virus and the, the downturn of the economy, the loss of jobs. There's no peace found in this world. But Jesus said, your peace will be found in me. And with this, he gave me 2022. The next verse says, And with that, Jesus breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. That's John 20, 21, and 22. The message I want to share with us today as a church family is this. TSC, Clear Vision 2021. That's the title of today's message. TSC, Thompson Station Church, Clear Vision. And you can just put your name in there. Tom's Clear Vision for 2021. Ashley's Clear Vision for 2021. You can put your name in there. Whoever you are, wherever you are, put your name in there. God will give you clear vision. Let's pray, and we'll get into the Word. God, thank you today for those who have gathered in this room, our crew of Skeleton Crew, and those who are gathered in living rooms across this state and across this nation. And Lord, today, give us clarity of vision. Coming out of a year that was fuzzy and foggy and cloudy and struggling, God, we ask for clarity today from your word. And we thank you for it. Holy Spirit, thank you for your presence. Now, may my mind think and my mouth say that which pleases you and challenges and changes us to walk in your clear path, your clear vision. Holy Spirit, fill me. And I thank you. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. The first word that day just in the office, this pretty much is the message God gave me there in November in the senior leadership team prayer time, and this is the message I share with you. The first word is the Lord said, walk in peace. God didn't design you as his daughter or his son to walk in a fuzziness or in a cloudiness or in a daze. God designed you and me to walk in peace. Verse 21, let me read it again, John 20. Jesus therefore said to them again, he had already said it in verse 19, but he said it again because he wants to make sure we get it and his disciples get it. Walk in peace. This is what he said. Peace be with you. The, the New Living Translation says this in 1 Thessalonians 3.16. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and always. Let me read one more verse in John 14, 26. John 14, 26 says this. Twenty-seven. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives to you, but your heart not be troubled, let it not be fearful. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not the world's peace, because the world's peace is troubled and cloudy and struggling. But I give you my peace, and your heart is not to be troubled. It, has, it, it cannot be fearful. John 14, 27. The world can't find peace without Christ. There's no peace without Christ. Now let me read First, Second Thessalonians three sixteen. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and always. I want to say that again. At all times and always. Nothing remains outside of those statements. At all times, always. Nothing's outside of that. In other words, every day, in every way, I have peace in Christ, always without interruptions. Jesus is my peace. And you can say, well, Tom, it doesn't happen that way in my life. Well, it doesn't happen that way in my life. But when it doesn't happen that way, let me tell you why it doesn't. Let me tell you why it doesn't. It's not on his fault. It's not, on, it's, it's not on him, it's on me. And what are you saying, Tom? You mean if I'm not having peace, it's my fault? Yeah. In this relationship, in the God-man relationship, he's perfect, I'm imperfect. He's sinless, I'm sinful. He doesn't make a mistake. I make a mistake every three seconds, or according to who you ask, every two seconds. Listen. If I'm not walking in peace, it is not the Lord who has moved in our relationship. It is me who has moved. When I'm not having peace, I'm not living in peace, it's because 
I'm not as close to Jesus as I should be. That's, that's the only thing I could come to when I was studying this. When I'm truly walking with Jesus, when I'm truly being led by the Spirit, matter of fact, John 14, I should just put a marker there, shouldn't I? John 14, 27, 26. I started there a while ago. But when the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring remembrance all that I said to you. And the next verse, peace I leave to you. You can't have the peace of Christ without the Holy Spirit of Christ. Remember, the Holy Spirit is Jesus in spirit form. When Christ ascended into heavens, he seated at the right hand of God, he sent his Spirit to be everywhere at all times in every believer. And so when I'm filled with the Spirit and I'm truly Spirit-led, then I'm going to walk in peace. How's that happen? It's a daily occurrence. It means I better start every day in God's Word. It means I better start every day with some prayer of this, for, of, this, of this nature. Lord Jesus, I need you today. If I walk in my strength, I'm going to walk in fear, and I'm going to walk in anxiety. I'm going to walk in stress. But I walk in the power in the name of Jesus. His blood covers me and forgives me. His Spirit fills me and empowers and enables me. I can walk in peace when I walk with Christ and Christ with me. Friends, that's how we walk in peace. So today, if you're not practicing that, begin that in this moment, a moment-by-moment moment walk with Jesus, and we can walk in peace. The second word the Lord gave me, by the way, this is, one, this is not going to be a long message today. The second word the Lord gave me was purpose. Every person on planet Earth needs a purpose, and people are trying to find it in every way, every day, and they're not finding it. They're not finding that purpose. So many people are not living with purpose. And they're not living on purpose, with a purpose. They, they're chasing after a position or power or, or a title or some amount of money or a new this or a new that, and it's not working. Friends, the purpose that we have is found also in John 20, 21. 20, 21, here it is again. Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so send I you. I also send you. That's our purpose. Christ came to save humanity. He saved us, and he sends us out to share him with others. That's our purpose. Jesus sent us with this purpose, the redemption of humanity, a global calling from Thompson Station to the ends of the earth. We are called with the purpose of connecting people with Jesus to experience his greater life. That's our purpose, the redemption of man. God came to re redeem humanity. He redeemed us. He wants to redeem everybody. And our job's not done until Jesus comes back or everybody on planet Earth is saved. That's it, the redemption of humanity. That's the calling of God on our lives. That's our purpose. And in this redemption, transformation takes place. I was lost, and now I'm found. My life was cloudy, and now it's clear. I was under anxiety. Now I live in peace. There is a transformation that takes place, and we're helping people find that through the study of his word, by being filled with the Spirit, by walking in community, getting in a life group, getting in a, a discipleship group, getting in worship, getting in a place that you can serve in, in worship leadership or with our children. Those things help us transform, not just the kids, we're helping but we're transformed when we're serving our teenagers friends you and I know the ones who are transformed the most are the ones who are doing the leading so get involved that's part of their transformation and part of your transformation and then reconciliation these are all part of the same process but they're great words reconciled to be reconciled those things which are put asunder are that's a good King James version in it asunder that's my dad's word. That, that's Dr. Don McCoy. Chip, Pastor Chip's over here laughing because my, my, uh, my dad and Chip worked together in uh, First Dixon. Asunder, those things that are separated, they're reconciled. Friends, that's a beautiful thing that I've been reconciled to God. And the beauty, when our hearts are being transformed, we're reconciled to God. We're called his sons and daughters. And we help others find that reconciliation. And then one last word that, uh, that's a fancy word, revelation. Now, the canon is closed. You understand that? Genesis 1 1 to Revelation 22 21, 20 21. It's closed. There's no more Bible being written. So if somebody tells you they, they hear a word from God, they might. They surely might, but it is not on the same authority as God's word. There's no new revelation in that sense, but there is personal 
inspiration and revelation to the point that God's giving me direction, God's giving me insight, I'll accept all of that. Nothing on par with the Bible, but yet God's still speaking. That we may see and understand and join of the work of God on earth. That's the revelation. God says, open your eyes and see people that need me. That's the revelation. There are young and old and in between that need Jesus and you and I are called. Our clear vision is to be a church that never stops 24-7, 365, taking the gospel to the ends of the earth. That's what we're called. That's the revelation. God, take the screens from our eyes and let us see that everybody everywhere needs to be connected to Jesus. He's their only hope for clarity, their only hope for purpose, their only hope for peace. It's Jesus. And you and I are called to do that. Join us. 2021 is going to be a powerful year for our church. And we're going, to, we're going to send our missionaries. Who's a missionary? Anybody that has Jesus. We're going to send them in our schools. We're going to send them in our neighborhoods. We're going to send them in our counties. We're going to send them in our state. And we're going to send them to the remote parts of the world. Be a part of that. Be a part of that. God came to reveal himself in Jesus. And he reveals himself to us, and he reveals himself to others through us. And what is, what is our mission? Look at this slide. Just put this acrostic. C-P-W-J. C-P-W-J. Put that in your mind. C-P-W-J. Connecting people with Jesus. If you and I just remember that, that every day we're to be a conduit. Every day we're, we're to be a, a positive point of contact with people that when they see us, when they experience us, when we encounter them and they encounter us, they're going to get a bit of Jesus from us. And we're going to be connecting people with Jesus. That's our mission. That's our purpose. That's why we're here. Um, let me just stop here for a second. And I hadn't said this in a long time, but I'm going to say it now. It's, I, think, I think the Lord put this in my mind. It's not in my notes. Do you, do you realize the only reason that we're still on planet Earth? Do you realize that? It's because people there need Jesus. And I, I've used this when I go speak at other churches, and I haven't said it here in a while. I'm going to say it again. You know, there's nothing on Earth that in any way can compare with heaven. You understand that. You see, in heaven, there's no pain. There's no coronavirus. There's no cancer. You know, right now, Leanne and I have family members on her side that, that are dying of cancer and dying with coronavirus on a ventilator right now. You know, there's none of that in heaven. So if that be true, if that is true, and it is that there's nothing on earth compared to heaven, there's pain and hurt and heartache and separation and, and difficulties on earth, none of that's in heaven. So the kindest, most benevolent, generous thing God could do would be to save us and then kill us and take us to heaven. That would be the kindest, nicest thing God could do. Why doesn't God do that? He leaves us here for the purpose that I just told you. Because other people need what you have. That's why the church exists. And by the way, let me remind all of us. We'll be back here the 10th of January at 9 and 1030 on campus. We'll still be online, but come join us on campus. Get back here with us. Wear your mask. That's fine. Uh, join with us. We do social distancing the best we can. Listen to me. We're going to be back here worshiping, but, but we don't exist just for each other. That's a part of it, but we primarily exist for those who don't yet know him. You understand that? We, we need to be reminded that as we're going in 2021. People without Jesus don't go to heaven. And if they don't go to heaven, there's only one alternative. That's a place called hell. So help us. Let's together be a church that connects people with Jesus. That's our purpose, and we live with purpose. And the last thought. Thought number three is we serve. How do we do this? How do we walk in this peace? And how do we, how do we live out that, that purpose? How do we do that? We do it by serving in power. You look on the screen there, serve in power. How do you walk in power? You can't do it on your own strength. It's verse 22, John 20, and it says this. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. He breathed on him and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. And back, back John uh, 14, 26. Let me read that again. But the Helper, 
the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to remembrance all that I said to you. The Holy Spirit, our helper, our helper. That's how we, that's how we live in purpose. That's how we walk in peace. We do it with the power of the Holy Spirit. We serve in the power of the Holy Spirit. Let me read it one more time in John 20, 22. And he said to them, after he said to them, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. How about it? I don't believe that that's a one-time experience. I believe that's a fresh feeling. You know, uh, it talks about vessels of honor in Timothy vessel uh, a clay pot you know that clay pots when they get brittle they get dry and they crack and then they leak do you know that they can be repurposed and uh, what I need sometimes well what I need on a daily I need to be repurposed I need a fresh touch of the master's hand on that potter's wheel and I need that anointing of the Holy Spirit I need that fresh feeling of the Holy Spirit you know uh, it's because I'm a leaky vessel I, 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 I don't retain the Lord because of my selfishness and my sinfulness uh, you know what I need to do is ask for forgiveness and say fill me fresh one more time today for this moment that's how I serve in power. And when I have the power of the Holy Spirit in my life and on my life, then I have the power to walk through personal struggles and difficulties in life. I'm not doing it by myself. I'm doing it with God in me. And he who is in me is greater than he who is in this world, whatever that struggle is. God in you is bigger and better and greater and stronger than anything you face. So personally, you can make it today with Jesus. You can walk through your personal struggles with that power. And you'll also have power to live and encourage and to bless others who are hurting. Because they're all about you. They're all about you. They're all around you. They're hurting. You'll have the power not just for you. Remember, when you have something, you don't want to hoard it and hold it and and be greedy with it. You want to give. And that's what all of us are. We're just one beggar giving another beggar bread. We have the bread of life, Jesus. We've been fed. We're not famished or hungry anymore. We've been filled. And what we have, we turn and give. We turn and give. That's what we do. The help we receive. We help others with it, Jesus. And then we have power to share the good news effectively. Remember that? CPWJ, connecting people with Jesus to experience his greater life. We have the power to share the gospel. You know what? Our flesh doesn't want to tell people about Jesus. I've been doing the ministry almost since I was 19. That's like 38 years. I'm 57. You don't have to calculate. I'm proud. I've earned every gray hair on my head. People are afraid to tell their age. I'm proud I'm still alive. Listen, it is not any easier after 38 years in the ministry to talk to people about Jesus. The devil gives you every excuse and push back. You can't do it in your own strength, your own want to, your own desire. We don't want to do that. It makes us nervous. But the Holy Spirit, when we say, Lord, give me the words, give me the courage, give me the opportunity. When we pray that prayer every day, I promise you God will cross your path with people that you can share the gospel with. In and through the Holy Spirit, we have the power to overcome the enemy and advance the kingdom of God. Yes, we do. Only with the Spirit of the living God on us. You know, when we talk about clarity, and uh, we need clarity in life. It's been a cloudy 2020, and we need clarity. That's what we're talking about. Remember, it's the peace and the purpose and the power of Jesus. That's our clear call. That's our clear vision. So, uh, you know, when I was thinking about illustrations for clarity... Uh, this is Robbie this is what I was thinking about now you young folks that are even our worship leaders today and those young folks at home you remember when you had a television that was in a box and it sat on a table kids ask your parents about that yes TVs weren't always this wide they used to be in a box like this well usually most of us had a box like this and it was black and white and then you had this thing called an antenna now, you have to Google that, antenna. I don't know how to spell it. It starts with A-N-T. And then somebody on the outside would have to go out. Does that, I've got on by 12 people in here. Somebody raise a hand if you remember an outside antenna. Kids, you, Sam, you can't raise your hand. You don't even know what I'm talking about. I see that hand in the back, Todd. Thank you on that sound. So anyway, he somebody out you'd have to open the window yell in and you'd turn literally turn the antenna why because you the you remember the 
the, the, the picture would go up and down like this and it'd be fuzzy and it wouldn't be any clarity. You have to turn it and get it. And it's kind of like, oh, you remember when a radio, oh, I'm talking to old people now. A radio had a knob. Go. <laughs> oh, touchdown, Tennessee. You know, you couldn't dial it in and you're, you're trying to make that which is cloudy and fuzzy, you're trying to make it clear with clarity. It's kind of like this picture. We have no idea what that is. But if we get closer to the Holy Spirit and we dial in daily, we get a little more clarity. And then that clarity says, oh, I can begin to see where God's working. I can begin to see what God's doing. And then we just keep walking in the Word and walking in the Spirit and we walk in the peace and the purpose and the power of Jesus. And then this is what we get. We get this clear picture. Friends, Jesus changes everything. Jesus changes everything. He'll change it for you. He's changed it for me. He's changed it for the few of us that are here. Listen, that's the clear picture for 2021. Jesus changes everything.